Okay, welcome to the first video tutorial of the year. So this is an acrylic painting that I did today and I'm filming it in real time with um, just some edits and cuts for like dead time, like when I was washing my brushes and things like that. So um, you won't be able to see the entire palette either. Um, I'm still working on my setup and camera situation. I'm using my iPhone to film this and um, so uh, because that's I actually have it taped duct taped to my music stand <laughs> and that's how I'm uh, filming this I don't have a proper tripod or anything like that anyway so I'm using a cradled panel and I got it at Michael's it came pre gessoed and is a birch panel um, and then I it was white gesso and I just put a layer of cobalt and a titanium buff paint by Golden. And after that dried, I'm just doing some flowers. I have two colors here because I'm gonna sketch out, just outline quickly the flowers I want. These are some sort of flower from Costa Rica. I'll probably put an inset of the picture because it was on my phone from my trip to Costa Rica a few years back. And uh, then I put the second, the brown color on my palette because I'm going to use that for the leaves so that I can just identify um, the leaves are the same shape as the flowers. So I just want to make sure that um, there's no confusion there. Okay, okay, so now I have mixed cadmium yellow with some of the alizarin crimson that I had on my palette and a little bit of zinc white to make the flowers. And this is just a, a sap green or hooker's green by Golden. Uh, and well, I'm adding a glazing medium by Golden. And that does kind of extend the dry time and makes it even more transparent. And I, I really just like it. I use it a lot. And a lot of my mixes because um, it does just make it act a little bit more like oil paint I think so I'm going in this, like I said this is straight sap green out of the tube with just a little bit of water and the glaze but as far as uh, color mixing it's just the sap or hookers green later I'll add a little bit of the yellow mixture to it and lighten it up a bit and even in my signature style, I guess you could say signature, um, this is very loosely done. It's not super realistic or, you know, the details are there. I'm trying to just capture, uh, you know, what you'd see in when I'm out, when I was out taking the pictures, you know, instead of noticing every individual leaf, um, you know, I just noticed, wow, there's some really cool bright yellow flowers over there. And that's kind of what I want because I'm actually going to put a bird on this painting. And that's going to be the main focal point of the painting. And this is just the background. So it's not going to be uh, really celebrating the flowers so much in their leaves. And the, um, let's see, what else can I tell you? about this so um, this is a flat brush and um, I think it's called a bright because it's shorter this um, there's flat brushes which I think have longer bristles and then the bright have as you can see is kind of stubby and um, I like both um, the the longer bristles are good for big flowing long strokes and then this is good for just uh, getting into little areas. It's good for using on the side to make uh, line, lines or um, th that would be what I use for like the beaks of birds a lot of times. Uh, I also use the corners a lot for highlighting and things like that. Okay, so this is titanium white, I think. Well, actually, this is just zinc white with the... These flowers have some sort of a uh, bloom coming out of them, uh, like a secondary bloom starting that's white. So that's kind of, like I said, I'm not even sure what kind of flower this is. I saw it in La Fortuna, Costa Rica, 
and just took pictures of it and not sure what it is and so these little white appendages like uh, flower petals really that are coming out of these pods I don't know what they would look like or you know how to even identify this because it might be at like a early stage before it's um, in full bloom is what I'm thinking I don't think that this is going to seed but that could be too uh, again not quite sure what what this flower is called if you know leave it in the comments I'll post a picture of it if I haven't already I'm gonna try to go back and insert it into the movie okay all right, what else here? Um, so I'm keeping the background pretty much the cobalt violet. And uh, then I go in and yeah, I'm just doing these little sprouting pe petals here. And I usually always make thicker brush strokes and piles of the lighter colors paints I go on thicker and so I don't usually use the glazing medium for that all right so I am going to put a bird here and why did I just wipe all this off why didn't I just paint um, the bird first and then the flowers around it well sometimes I do but I've been experimenting with just painting entire backgrounds first and then adding a bird where I think it would appear. And, and in a way, that's how it would be in real life. Um, you wouldn't paint the flowers around the bird. And I could uh, obviously just paint like a partial flower, but I do just kind of like the feeling of having the flowers in the back and then just making what uh part of them disappear i don't know it's just more a more organic process to me and a more natural process than uh trying to paint uh, the overlapping um partial flowers that one would normally do when they're just painting uh two-dimensionally so um but I am going ahead. Sometimes I actually paint over the flowers I've painted on a background. But since these are so thick and the paint is still wet, I'm going ahead and just wiping it. And you can see that uh, some of the marks are still there anyway. But I got most of it off so that I could go back and paint this bird. And I'm painting a baby toucan. And they're just so cute. I just have been wanting to paint one for a while. And I'm painting a lot of tropical birds this month because well the holidays are over and it's January and I just start thinking about tropical places this time of year so uh, yeah we really need some color uh, the days are so short up here in the north and it's getting cold and yeah so um, I'm adding I have a cadmium yellow to cadmium this is a light and I've got a medium it was the medium I used on the background flowers but the beak of the toucan is very lemony colored so and I'm mixing in just a touch of the green and you can see it kind of turning green there which happens a lot more easily I think with the lemon yellow because it's a much cooler yellow so we're I'm just going to put the first layer here of the beak. This is a good time to get your shape right. You can always go back and um, correct it. One thing I love about oil and acrylic is that you can kind of play around um, with your paints before and then make adjustments on the actual surface, unlike watercolor where whatever you lay down is going to stay there and you can't go back and redo it or cover it up. But you can with acrylics. So it's kind of nice to just put down what, um, well, you can do washes, I guess, with watercolor, but like layers. And then, um, I mean, you don't want to be like making major corrections uh, because you did bad uh, sketching uh, on your final painting. But uh, as far as I, you know, I don't paint a lot of toucan beaks, uh, so 
being able to just lay down, block in the colors first uh, with the lemon yellow, because that's the main color of the beak. I can go back and um, I do make adjustments to the shape of it. I it's it's too thin, so I'm going to go make it a little thicker in areas, and then I'll add shadowing and um, just make it look more like a real beak. Um, so. Uh, but we got to go ahead and get the body here of this little toucan. And I'm also going to go back and so I'm using several brushes. That was the uh, largest brush I used, which is a larger flat brush. And it's got a lot of bristles because it's a lot bigger brush. I'm not sure the number of it. I'm uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure, but you can see the size of it there. Okay, so this has some cobalt violet in it, this white that I put under his chin. And I'm not sure what I just put over there in the corner. It might be some more white because I probably am going to make some more white for the breast and the head. So a lot of the birds I paint have just a black eye, and this one has one of those big, um, kind of like the googly eyes um, that has a yellow uh, cent yellow and then black center. So I'm going in and making that now. And then I will end up making adjustments to it later on because I kind of mess it up with my paint and with my highlight, which didn't turn out the way I wanted. So uh, those are the kind of adjustments I'm talking about, which is, I think, the beauty of acrylic paints. Is being it's a little bit forgiving, not completely, but it's it's a little bit. And now I'm making ultramarine blue uh, for the feet. A little bit of water there, with my spray bottle, and I usually wear gloves. I just otherwise the acrylic paint gets all over under my nails and on my hands, and besides it looking bad. Uh, it's not really good to have paint on your skin. It does absorb through your skin, so uh, it's just not a good idea. Uh, even though a lot of people don't like gloves either. To me, the glove you can buy if you're allergic to vinyl. You can buy late, or most people would be more allergic to latex. I guess there's vinyl, there's nitrile, there's all kinds of different um, materials that gloves are made out of. So. Um, okay, so here's what I'm talking about. I make a little shadow area underneath the beak, and I'm just going to shape it the way I want. I also kind of split it there. Um, just barely, can barely see that. But here we're going to, I'm going to really work on the beak here with some of the brighter, our cadmium yellow, which is a little warmer, mixed with some of the violet, cobalt violet. That'll tone it down a little bit, and some white, I think. All right, just grabbing another brush for this part. And this, I think, really is the defining moment in him looking like a toucan. <laughs> it's that beak, the beak and the eye, and then the blue feet. He's so happy. I just love these uh, birds. <laughs> he has so much character. Okay, so I am going to work on the white breast here. This bird has a white breast, but um, the first three strokes, if this were canvas, um, it would probably lay down a lot differently, but because it's a very smooth wood, um, it just scrapes at the, I knew that would happen, but I did it anyway. It just scraped across. Uh, if I had not pushed so hard, it would have, probably laid it down, but I kind of wanted to get a scraping effect. Um, just kind of being playful with my paints here. One thing I'm going for with these tropical birds is, um, unlike a lot of the northern birds, the sparrows, and then painting for fall and winter, um, here's what I'm talking about where I scrape the paint. 
Um, and I was just using a lot of earth tones and grays. And so I'm going to be using a lot of color, a lot more saturated, bright, and bold colors for these tropical bird paintings. It's a great way to spend January, I think. All right, yeah, that's kind of what I was going for instead of the scraping look. So, and that was just a, a larger flat brush. Okay, so here's where I try a highlight, but it didn't really go on with that. Um, it might be the consistency and then maybe the brush I was using. Um, so I, I know I go back and even though I like um, the effect of that, I don't like the, well, that one's like not even on the bird. So I, I correct that a little bit. And then I go back and fix the eye because his highlight is like above his eye. It's not even on his eye correctly. It kind of trailed off the eye there. And I don't know what that, I think it was like a hair or something on my brush. Okay, so some highlights on the legs here. So what else? can I tell you one thing I've been doing for uh, I've decided to start doing is I'm I've always been a list maker uh, most of my adult life but I'm getting away from that this year I am getting just frustrated with not finishing the things on my list um, it's being so ambitious in the morning and then by the end of the day just having too much unfinished uh, things on my to-do list and just also feeling so tired of just always having things to do. So I've stopped making lists and I just keep the list in my head. And if I can't remember it, then it just doesn't get done that day. And that might not work if you're a CEO of a big company, but I have to tell you how liberating it feels to um, wake up and not have a list that you're checking things off. And you know, I went to BYU. That's where um, the Franklin Planner, when I was there in the 80s, that was like a big thing, um, checking off to-do lists. <laughs> but um, it's just really liberating and realistic that if I can't remember it, I, then maybe it's not even that important. So um, I, I do, I am trying to segment my days though, so I am just focused and um on that part of the day and then I'll go to a different segment of my day and focus on that so for example you know I'm even talking about shopping lists or my art supply list now I do still write down some of the art supplies I need as I run out of them just because that's something that I don't really want to keep in my head. But as far as even my grocery shopping list, I've stopped making lists unless I'm having a party and I'm like at Thanksgiving, I needed to get certain ingredients. So I did make a list for that. But I'm getting to a point where even if I'm running low on something in my house, um, if I don't remember it, then I don't sweat it. I just know that I'll remember it next time. And I just am trying to have confidence in myself that I can do those things. So yeah, all I have to say is it just feels really good to not have so many to-do lists. All right, so I'm going back in now, adding some more yellow to the background, just kind of tie into that very yellow beak, which is really sticking out, I think. So um, lightening up some of the branches because in the photo and in real life, a lot of them were catching the sun in different directions with a little more highlight on them anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right here. And I am kind of looking at my photo to see which branch or which leaves um, were catching some of the sun, but some of them are just randomly placed. Uh, just depending on what I felt, where I felt like putting them. Now I'm just adding a little vein with a yellow or stem, even. All right. I'm just going to sign my name soon, I think.
Okay, I'm gonna fix the eye here. It's a very um, small liner pin around brush. Just working on some of the final details. I'm not sure what color that is I put on the branch. It looks kind of like a ochre. Could be Mars yellow. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I did this on the second floor of my house and I'm in my basement right now. Okay, that looks a lot better. So some of these details really, it does make a difference if you just fix it, adjust it. All right, I wanted it to be <laughs> bigger. I thought it looked pretty good, but now it's definitely got a big highlight. All right, and then so I'm gonna do the name in yellow. I just liked that yellow that I had on my palette. All right. Baby Toucan.